Now, among one in three jobs created over the past year, among one in three was due to the NDIS, the National Disability Insurance Scheme. Just look at the rate of NDIS job growth compared to total employment. Uh, it is rapid uh, and it's unsustainable, Sophie. When you compare it to the private sector jobs, this is economically devastating for taxpayers. Uh, what can be done about this issue? Because the expenditure we're having in that area and, and the number of people who are now uh, falling under that umbrella of the NDIS who really shouldn't. There are people there who need the NDIS who are absolutely legitimate cases and then there are others who are now falling under this very broad umbrella. Well, Rita, that's exactly the point, isn't it? The NDIS, I think, is a very important scheme and helps a lot of people, as you said, that do need it. But unfortunately, like with all these sorts of things, uh, you know, when there is money being handed out, there is rorting. And I think that is one thing that the government really needs to look at and they have been looking at is cracking down people who are accessing money that perhaps shouldn't be. But obviously this expenditure here, it's not sustainable, Rita. It can't just keep growing growing at this rapid pace. Uh, sticking with bad economic data, we were expecting three to four interest rate cuts this year, but now the Australian Financial Review is reporting that economists are predicting there will be no rate cuts in 2024, or at least none until November. They're arguing inflation just isn't slowing as fast as other countries and the job market remains too tight. Sophie, this is a bad news for home buyers. We're going to see a lot more people pushed into mortgage stress. Absolutely, Rita. I mean, we've got a cash rate uh, that is quite high now compared to what it was during COVID when it was, uh, you know, right down near zero. Uh, we've had, what, 13 rate rises. And that is obviously impacting people. The cost of living is going up. But we have a share market that at, at record highs. We've got house prices going up. Everything seems to be going up. So these rate cuts, as economists say, probably won't come this year if their predictions are correct. Now, we've got the Deputy Opposition Leader, Susan Lay. She's decided it's crucially important that we have gender balance in the cockpit. She is launching an audit that will push major airlines to boost women's participation and hit gender equality targets. But, Sophie, if women don't want to fly, then they don't want to fly. I mean, Susan Lay should accept that. This is a free country. We're not some backward country where women are oppressed and I would have thought there's one job above all others where you do not want any sort of quotas including gender quotas and that's airline pilots. I mean I just find this just a bizarre thing for a supposedly conservative politician to be pursuing. Uh, uh, Rita it, it's baffling to see why she would make this an issue. Mm. Uh, Gender she's, quotas. she's a pilot herself. So that, that's doesn't... right. That's right. She has got that experience herself. Maybe she should apply to but, go work for But, quotas. Rita, why aren't we going back to uh, where people are, you know, looking for jobs and people are being hired for jobs because they're the best person, not what their gender makeup is? And just filling gender quotas, I think, is not a good uh, thing. Uh, are you... Uh talking about the M word, merit. That's, <laughs> that's almost a dirty word. I have oh, a trigger Rachel. warning for the audience because, you know, only bigots use that kind of word. Well, yeah, I, mean, I just find this bizarre. This is a big issue mm. overseas. There's been a lot of controversy, particularly in the US, with airlines pushing for different types of quotas, gender quotas, diversity quotas of other types. And uh, it's never embraced because we all fly and the last thing you want is uh, to guess whether the, the pilot is there f fulfilling a quota. 